All right, guys, let's recap what went down last session. You started off in the gritty streets of Drudgemire, right in the middle of a certain avenue which I can't say the name of in the start of a video. Anyway, it was here you decided enough was enough. You're broke, you're tired, and the city's holding you back. So naturally you end up at the cracked cask, a tavern as broken down as your pockets where chaos was practically oozing from the walls. Inside, things got wild fast. Thick trunk made quite the entrance, swinging the door wide and stomping in, and immediately spotting two goons shoving a tabaxi's head into a makeshift fire. Instead of jumping to conclusions, you had a spirited debate about whether saving the poor guy was even worth it. In the end, Thrunk went full divine justice, smashing one guy's skull into pudding with a maul and scaring the other so bad he bolted out of there like his pants were on fire. Turns out the Dabaxi, Jas Quickpaw, wasn't the table-shitting criminal he was accused of being. He's actually a messenger for Varen Duskvale, an art collector from the slightly fancier district of Emberist. Jask was scouting out a tapestry sale, but the whole thing was a setup. Those thugs wanted to rob him. When they found out he had no coin, they decided to roast him instead. You convinced Jask to spill the beans on Varen's house, including the valuable stash he keeps locked up in the back. After some, let's call it, negotiation, Jask agreed to help you plan the heist in exchange for a cut of the profits. You got him down to 10%, unless he handles the buyers for you, in which case he'll take 20. With a solid lead, you wrapped up your discussion at the cracked cask. So, where do you go from here? I'm tired. All this scheming, talking, almost getting burned alive by proxy. It's draining. Should we have a rest? Rest? You've done fucking nothing, Squibbity. All you did was sit there and ramble about conspiracies while I smashed a guy's skull in. Why would we rest when we've got plans to set in motion? Agreed. Nighttime is the perfect time to scout things out. Even if we're not jumping straight into the heist tonight, which I'm not suggesting, mind you, we could at least get a feel for the place, learn the layout, see who's around. Yeah. Stopping now would just be a piss poor effort, if I'm being frank. You rush into this, and the only thing we're getting is locked in a cell or worse. I vote for a proper rest, regroup in the morning, and then proceed with intelligence. Intelligence? You're the guy who thought the tabaxi burning was some kind of deep state operation? And now you want us to wait until daylight when everyone can see us sneaking around? Real smart, Squibbity. Look, there's a middle ground here. We scout now, quietly, mind you, then decide if we need to wait or act. It's reconnaissance, not an invasion. No one's saying we go in swinging tonight. Fine, but if this goes sideways, just remember who is advocating for a bit of shut-eye. Noted. Now, let's stop bickering and get to it before this plan falls apart, before it even starts. So, are you heading to the Emberest district? Yeah. All right. The walk takes you deeper into the slums of Drudgemire, the kind of place where the shadows seem to stretch longer and darker, as if the night itself doesn't want to touch the filth on the ground. The air grows colder, carrying the scent of rotting food and damp stone, and your boots crunch on shattered glass and gravel as you tread carefully along the uneven streets. You pass a crumbling building where a group of thugs are hunched over a man, their fists rising and falling in dull, wet thuds. His groans are faint, more pitiful than defiant, and no one else pays them any attention. Just another night in the slums. Further along, a cluster of children, thin as twigs, huddle around a gutter fire, their faces hollow-eyed and soot-streaked. They glance up as you pass, but their stares hold no curiosity, only resignation, as though your ghosts already fading into the darkness. Good gods, look at them, those poor children. Hollow-eyed, soot-streaked, clinging to a gutter fire for warmth. It's enough to stir the heart of even the most callous man. Yeah, real sad. You know what else is sad? Us. We just crawled out of Piss Avenue. What exactly do you think we're gonna offer them? My mall? Some motivational speeches? Maybe they'd like a whiff of Squibbity's paranoia. Hey. Paranoia is awareness, Thrunk. And for your information, I could help them. Those kids don't need coin. They need truth. Yeah, because what every starving kid needs is a crash course in ridiculous theories. It's easy to sneer, Quill, but those children deserve better. The least we could do is... What? What could we do, Barwin Brexitus? Give them the one gold piece we might scrounge up from this job? Adopt them? You gonna lug a bunch of kids around while we break into Varen's house? They'll be real quiet while we're dodging guards, I'm sure. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but we're broke, bankrupt, destitute. If anything, they should be helping us. And you think they've got anything in that fire we could sell? 
Maybe a spoon or something? Jesus, Squibbity, you'd rob a bunch of starving children? That's low, even for you. Hey, I'm just brainstorming. You want solutions or not? Enough. Clearly, our hands are tied for now. But if we make it big on this heist, we should come back and do something for them. You're living in some kind of fantasy. What? You think we're going to stroll back here with sacks of gold and suddenly save the day? Those kids will probably be dead by the time we return, if they're lucky. He's got a point. You think those gutter fires burn clean? Those fumes are killing them faster than the starvation. Because that's the takeaway here. The fumes. Not the crushing poverty or the occasional gang beatdown. And even if, by some miracle, they're still alive, there's thousands of kids like that in this hellhole. You want to feed all of them? Start an orphanage? Maybe you could sell that fancy loot of yours to fund it. Now you're just being cruel. Am I? Or am I just the only one being realistic? You can't save everyone, Barwin. Hell, you can barely save yourself. Let's focus on getting us out of this gutter first before you go drafting up charity plans. I hate to say it, but Thrunk's right. We've got enough problems just keeping ourselves alive. These kids, they've been surviving this long. They'll keep surviving or they won't. That's the way of it. All right, we keep moving. Okay, as you guys carry on, you notice that above, mismatched balconies sag under their own weight, threatening to collapse onto the street below. The occasional shout or scream echoes through the narrow alleys, cut off suddenly as if swallowed by the night. The massive walls of Emberus loom ahead, a stark silhouette against the faint glow of its district's lights. Their presence is oppressive, separating the wealthier district like a fortress, keeping out the rot of Drudgemire. You're about ten minutes away when a figure slides out of a narrow alley to block your path. Oh, here we go. He's wrapped in a patchwork hood and cloak that seem to blend into the shadows, but his hands twitch with a jittery energy that gives him away. Oh, you lie look like you could use a little something to take the edge off. Got some fine spice here, fresh as the night air. He pulls out a small pouch. Look, my good man, we're not interested, but even if we were, we don't have a single coin to spend, so you're barking up the wrong tree. Try someone else. Ah, but coin's not the issue here, is it? It's about the opportunity. The first taste, that's on me. No strings attached. You try it. You see what it can do for you. Sharpens your edge, makes you better. And then, when the time comes, you'll know where to find me. Is this guy for real? We're telling you to piss off, and you're still pitching your junk like we're in the market for it. I can see you've got big plans. Dangerous ones, too. You'll want every advantage you can get. This? This could make all the difference. You'd be surprised how many people at the top started with a little boost. Oh, here we go. Subtle, real subtle. People at the top, huh? Let me guess. You're saying this is how the powerful stay in power, right? That we'd be stupid not to join the club? Hey, I'm just trying to help. What'd you do with it? That's up to you, but a little something in the right moment could save your life. Could make you a hero. You've got that look about you. Like you're on the verge of greatness. Buddy, the only thing we're on the verge of is tossing you headfirst into an alley if you don't back off. I get it. Suspicious types. Careful types. I respect that. But sometimes, taking the edge off isn't just about you. It's about the people depending on you. Your crew. Your cause. Don't you want to make sure you're at your best when it counts? The dealer leans in slightly, his voice smooth and persuasive, his pale, jittery hands clutching the glowing pouch tighter. He's got the kind of tone that snakes its way into your thoughts, planting seeds of doubt as much as temptation. The faint light from the spice illuminates his face, a face that doesn't seem to understand rejection. All right, enough of this. I step up, close the distance, and get right in his face. Piss off! Thrunk, you loom over the man, your tusks towering above him as your massive frame practically blocks out the alley behind him. The dealer freezes, his confidence cracking as he raises his hands in surrender. All right. All right. No need to get all worked up. I'll take my product elsewhere. No hard feelings, eh? And with that, the dealer starts to back away, clutching his pouch protectively, his jittery demeanor suddenly cautious. Joe, I attack the guy with my short sword. Uh, what? I'm serious. He's annoying, and I don't like the way he's been trying to sell us on this crap. Short sword, 
straight to the gut. I knew I liked you, Quill. Also, I should get sneak attack on this because Thrunk was in his face. All right, roll for attack. That's a 16. Okay, that hits. Roll damage. So that's a four plus my dex, which is another four plus my sneak attack, which would you believe it is another four. So that's 12 points of damage. Quill's blade flashes before sinking deep into the man's stomach. His wide bloodshot eyes lock on yours, disbelief mixing with pain as he stumbles back. He clutches the wound, his blood-soaked hands trembling. Good gods, Quill. That was completely unnecessary. And with that, I'm going to need everyone to roll for initiative. Wait, what the hell do you mean initiative? Are we fighting? Is he not dead? Of course we're fucking fighting. Quill just stabbed the shit out of him, and he's still twitching. You think he's going to thank us for the free stabbing lesson? But we didn't have to roll for it when you attacked that guy in the tavern. Why now? I told you, because he's still twitching. I one-shot the guy in the tavern. His head popped like a melon. This guy's still alive, bleeding, and probably real pissed. Yeah, well, I, d I didn't expect him to have this much fight in him. My bad for thinking he'd just die quietly. Guys, initiative rolls. That's an 18 for me. That's a fucking one. A seven for me. And a 10 for me. All right. So the dealer rolled an eight, which means you're first, Quill. All right, Joe, I'm going to finish what I started. I'll move forward, pull out my short sword, and stab him again. Let's keep it clean. All right, roll to attack. Nice. So that's a 16. That hits. Roll for damage. Ooh, that's only seven points of piercing. Your blade sinks into the dealer's side, blood spurting as he staggers back. He's hurt, but still standing, his hands scrabbling to keep his intestines where they belong. All right, Squibbity, you're up. Right, right. I'm going to step back 10 feet and cast Fireball. No way I'm getting near that guy while he's still flailing around. That's an 11. Please tell me it hits. Nope. That misses. Fuck! The firebolt zips past him and singes the alley wall, leaving a black scorch mark. Great, I'm useless. I knew we should have rested. Rest wouldn't have changed a damn thing for you, man. The dealer, bleeding heavily glances down at the glowing pouch of spice. Desperation flashes in his bloodshot eyes as he reaches for it, clawing at the glowing powder with trembling hands. Without a word, he brings a handful to his face and sniffs deeply. The effect is immediate. His body stiffens and then, like a spring wound too tightly, he snaps into motion. His movements become jittery but unnaturally fast, every twitch of his muscles almost vibrating with a manic energy. The blood dripping from his wounds seems to flow slower, his breaths coming in sharp, erratic gasps. It's as if he's running on borrowed time and burning it all in one go. He's spicing up! Oh, God! He's spicing up! This is it! This is how they get you! Shut the fuck up, Alex! Fueled by this newfound energy, he lunges at you, Quill. He's attacking twice now, first with the desperation of a man clinging to life, and then with a frenzy only the spice could bring. The first blade strikes true with a 15, slicing across your side. That's six points of piercing damage. The dagger leaves a sharp, stinging line of pain as you stumble back slightly, Quill, your expression twisting in frustration. The dealer doesn't pause, though. His eyes wide and unfocused, he jerks forward for another wild stab. But this time, his hand shakes too much, the spice amplifying his speed but throwing off his precision. The blade whiffs past your face, close enough to feel the air move, but it's a clear miss. What the hell is going on right now? Well, it's your turn, Barwin. What you doing? All right, Joe. Time to de-escalate. Violently, I'm casting Vicious Mockery on the dealer. Let's see how he handles a proper dressing down. All right, the dealer makes a wisdom saving throw. That's an eight, so that fails. Roll for damage, and let's hear the insult. Oi! You spiced up lunatic. I've seen rats with better self-control, and at least they don't smear glowing shit all over their faces before dying in a gutter. Oh gosh, so that's two points of psychic damage. Two! Fucking two! The words hit the dealer like a slap to the face, his manic grin faltering for a moment as the psychic damage takes hold. Bloodshot eyes narrow and he snarls, but you can see the sting of your words digging deep. All right, Thrunk, you're up, buddy. Joe, I step forward and bring my maul down on this guy hard. That's a 17 to hit. That hits. Roll for damage. And 11 points of bludgeoning damage. Your maul smashes into the dealer's shoulder, the sickening crunch echoing through the alley. He drops to one knee, coughing up blood, barely holding himself together. He's on death's door now. All right, so top of the round, Quill, you're up. I'm going in for another stab. No way this guy's walking out of here. So that's a nine to hit. You lunge forward with your short sword, but the dealer fueled by desperation and spice, stumbles just out of reach. 
your blade scraping harmlessly against the cobblestones. Seriously? This guy's half dead and I still can't hit him? It doesn't matter how dead they are, their armor class remains the same. Fucking oversight. All right, Squibbity, you're up. Joe, I'm firing another firebolt. No more missing. Oh, come on, give me a goddamn break. So I'm guessing you missed. Yes, I missed. I rolled an eight. Unlucky. The firebolt zips past the dealer again, slamming into a nearby pile of trash, which promptly bursts into flames. The dealer doesn't even flinch. He's too busy staying alive. Unbelievable. Why do I even bother? I'm not sure, friend. I asked myself that very same question last session, and again this session, and more likely than not, every future session we have together. Oh, you can't speak. You did too goddamn damage. That's still too more than you. Now it's the dealer's turn. Seeing an opening, he disengages and shifts his focus to Squibbity. Blood dripping from his mouth, he lunges forward with surprising speed, dagger in hand. Oh boy, that's a natural 20 to hit. What? And 11 points of piercing damage. 11 damage? Are you kidding me? This guy's supposed to be dying. What is this, the boss battle of Drudgemire? The dealer's dagger plunges deep into your side with savage precision, and you feel the blade twist before he pulls it free. Blood gushes from your wound as you stumble back. You've got plenty of fight for someone who talks so much. Keep running your mouth, lizard. Oh, you did not just call me that. I'm going to fry you alive, you back alley reject. Why don't you try hitting him first? Whose side are you on? My side. All right, Barwin, you're up. I'll cast Healing Word on Squibbity because, frankly, we need him standing for cannon fodder. So that's six points of healing. Please, sir, can I have some more? You'll get what you're given. Next, for my action, I'm going to move up to the dealer and take a jab at him with my loot dagger. Take this, you pesky menace. Oh, no. That's a seven to hit. Why can't we hit this guy? What is going on? Also, what the hell is a loot dagger? Ah, the loot dagger, a masterful combination of artistry and lethality. Essentially, I've nailed and glued a dagger to the tip of my loot, much like a bayonet. Truly one of the finer things the French have invented. Shame they haven't had many successes since. It's a pile of shit. That's what it is. You're over there swinging your fancy ass loot like it's the sword of destiny and you can't even hit a guy hopped up on glowing dust. What the fuck was that supposed to be, Barwin? Maybe he's supposed to die laughing at how useless you are. I'll have you know, Thrunk, the loot dagger is a weapon of finesse, not brute force. Finesse my ass. All you've managed to do so far is two points of damage and heal the guy I wanted to die. I'm sorry, what? You're about as useful as a loot with no strings. Well, instead of critiquing me, why don't you try bringing something to this fight? You salty, salty elephant man. Well, it's your turn now, Thrunk. What's the plan? Joe, I'm ending this. I'm gonna swing my maul, full force, right to his chest. That's a 19 to hit. Nice, that hits, roll for damage. So that's nine points of bludgeoning damage. How do you wanna do this? I wanna swing my maul so hard into his chest that he coughs back up that fairy dust he snorted. I want to feel his ribs give way under the weight of it, hear that sick crunch as his lungs just stop working. And when he keels over, gasping for air and choking on his own mistake, I swing my maul around in a full 360, like I'm Babe Ruth, and whack him so hard I send him flying. Not just to the ground, I mean airborne. I want this bastard to bounce off the nearest wall like the sorry sack of shit he is. All right, Thrunk. You grip your maul tight, and with a roar, you swing the massive weapon into his chest. The impact is like a thunderclap. His ribs splinter, his sternum caves in, and with a horrid wet gasp, he coughs up a plume of glowing spice dust, staining the air with a faint shimmer. Before his knees even touch the ground, you grip the maul and twist into a perfect, brutal spin. The weight of the maul arcs through the air in a flawless 360, colliding with the side of his head with enough force to crack his skull. The momentum sends him flying, his limp body slamming into the wall of the alley with a sickening thud before crumpling to the ground in a heap. The alley goes silent save for the faint drip-drip of blood pooling from his broken form. He's not just dead, he's annihilated. Holy shit, I nearly died. My life flashed before my eyes. I saw... I saw my childhood. Simpler times, chasing fireflies, and imagining I'd grow up to slay dragons. Then it shifted, and I was back in that lab, the one where they implanted the thoughts in my head. Don't look at me like that. It's real. And then, just as I thought it was all over, I saw myself. On a throne of bones, laughing maniacally. But it wasn't my laugh. It was theirs. You understand? Damn, that sounds intense. Do you, um, 
Do you want to see further? What? Further? Like, more visions? No, like me smashing you in the head again to see if your brain cooks up a sequel. I don't understand why you're so nasty to me. I've never done anything to you, and all I get is mean comments and threats. What did I do to deserve this? It's not that I discriminate. You're just the easiest to target, and I find it funny. Well, regardless, the dealer is dead. So, well done, us, I suppose. On the bright side, I doubt there's much we could do in this dump that would actually attract the attention of the guards. But seriously, Quill, why did you attack him? And could you maybe warn us next time before you start stabbing people? Warn you? What would you have done? Formed a committee? Held a vote? The guy was pushing us and I took action. You're welcome, by the way. Plus, now we can steal his stuff. His spice, his weapon, his shoes. You get the gist. You know what? That's not actually a terrible idea. We are utterly broke, after all. Might as well make the most of this tragedy we've caused. Well, seeing as I'm the one who smashed his skull in, I get first dibs. Joe, I want to search his mangled corpse and see what treasures this spice-sniffing lunatic was hoarding. Who knows? Maybe he's got something worth more than his damn glowing dust. Roll an investigation check for me, Thrunk. That's a 17. Thrunk, you crouch over the dealer's broken body your shadow swallowing the faint, flickering glow of the spice scattered across the cobblestones. His limbs are twisted at unnatural angles, his chest caved in like a collapsed mine shaft, your handiwork plain to see. Blood pools around him, thick and dark, the sharp metallic scent mixing with the faint chemical tang of the spice. You start with his belt, ripping off a small satchel stained with his blood. Inside you find a handful of coins, seven gold and nine silver pieces jingling faintly as you shake it loose. Not bad for a gutter rat. Next, your eyes catch the dull glint of his weapon, a jagged shiv still clutched in his hand. You pry his fingers loose with little effort, the blade's crude design clear up close. It's sharp, dangerously so, but clearly made for utility rather than elegance. Still, a weapon's a weapon. You keep searching, your hands moving to the inside of his patched cloak. Hidden within a stitched-in pocket, you find a folded map, creased and worn. It's marked with scribbles and symbols in the margins, most of which mean nothing to you at a glance, but one thing is clear. A warehouse is circled in bold, messy strokes, likely somewhere nearby. Finally, as you lift his cloak to check the lining, you notice a small, leather-bound book tucked into his waistband. Pulling it free, you thumb through the pages, smudged with dried blood and filled with cramped handwriting. It's a ledger, listing names, debts, and deals, evidence that someone bigger than him is pulling the strings in this district. Could be worth something if sold to the right person, or used as leverage. At last, you grab the satchel hanging loosely from his neck. It's heavier than you expected and warm to the touch. As you open it, the glow intensifies revealing a decent stash of glow spice. Enough for eight uses, if you had the nerve. Illegal, dangerous, and probably worth more than anything else he had to his name. By the time you stand, your hands are covered in blood, spice dust clinging to your skin like some cursed glitter, and your loot is secured. So do I have any idea how much all this stuff is worth? Based on what you've gathered and your, let's call it street-level expertise, here's what you're looking at. The Shiv? Maybe four gold tops, sharp, but it's still just a crude weapon. Nothing to write home about. That satchel of glow spice is the jackpot here, easily worth 50 gold on the street. Maybe more to the right buyer, but it's hot stuff. Illegal as hell, so selling it won't be without risk. The ledger, literally worthless to someone who doesn't care about names and numbers. But in the right hands, this could be valuable. Blackmail material, leverage, or evidence for someone looking to clean up or exploit this district. The map? Hard to say. It might just be a crumpled piece of paper to most, but the warehouse it marks could hold something valuable or dangerous. So, rough guess, all this combined could fetch you anywhere from 75 to 100 gold, depending on the buyer and how much heat you're willing to risk. But that's just an estimate. It could be worth far more to the right person or significantly less if you're desperate to offload it. I run up to Quill. Blood and spice dust still clinging to my hands and scoop him up in a massive bear hug. His feet leave the ground as I squeeze him tight, probably harder than I should. But who cares? Well done, you glorious bastard. Well done. 
What a brilliant idea that was. We're practically rich now. The spice, the ledger, even that crumpled map. Look at this hall. This is the kind of thinking we need more of. I struggle to catch my breath under his relentless squeezing. Uh, thrunk. That's a lot of enthusiasm. Maybe let me breathe. Breathing's overrated. You should be proud, Quill. This is a masterstroke. Hell, I take back all the things I said about you being useless. Well, most of them. I finally set him down, clapping him on the back hard enough to make him stumble. I must admit, Quill, I didn't see it at first, but this was inspired. A quick stab, a bit of chaos, and now we're walking away with enough loot to start rebuilding our fortunes. Not bad for a scoundrel with a sharp blade. Yeah, yeah, good job, Quill. But next time, maybe warn us before you go full murder spree. Nearly had my soul yanked out of my body back there. Oh, come on, you all doubted me, and now look where we are. Standing over a fresh corpse with a small fortune in loot, I told you I had it handled. Let's not forget, I'm the one who turned that guy into street decor. But fine, Quill, you get the credit. Just remember who's carrying the big stick in this group. All right, guys. I think that's where we'll wrap this session up. You've done well, I'll give you that, turning what could have been a simple street encounter into, well, a glowing pile of chaos and a corpse. It's interesting to see you all leaning into this more murder-hobo direction. Not what I expected, but hey, I think it's cool. It's definitely going to lead to some interesting plot developments down the line, but yeah, that's where we'll call it for tonight. Take a moment to reflect on the fact that your first big victory involves looting spice off a guy you pulverized into a fine paste very wholesome start to your adventure.